combination of weakening muscles and an open mouth posture seems to be lengthening the face, causing a downswing in facial form. It also seems that the reduced time of breastfeeding and the early introduction of sort of soft pureed foods is disrupting the normal development of a swallow. And that is more influential on the position of the teeth. This illustration is quite useful. If the tongue is on the roof of the mouth at rest and there's a strong biting force between the teeth, then the face tends to grow forwards under tight control. And yet, if the tongue is hanging low in the mouth, where you're resting with your mouth open, and you have weak muscle tone, then the face tends to lengthen, dropping down. And certain adjustments are then made to protect the airway. The facial form seems to have dropped down and back seems to have downswung. Here we have an image of an ancient man set against an image of a good grower. And you can see how the whole facial form seems to have dropped down and back. And of course, this is carrying the tongue down back towards the airway. This is what we refer to as a downswing in facial form. If you see this young girl, she is a good example of how as she has grown, her face has downswung. As this has occurred, her face has lengthened. And since she only has so much face, it has also got narrower and it's got shallower. So within the cross section area, there is less space for the tongue, her teeth and the airway. So she'll have crooked teeth, but also she's got a restricted airway. And there's certain compensations that we can make to correct this. The first compensation is moving the head and neck, usually extending the head to open the airway. And the second is changes in the position of the tongue and the jaw. So we have termed this downswing in facial form as craniofacial dystrophy. This is the first time someone's tried to put a name to the pathological process underlying crooked teeth. Now, it seems that a face that's the not the right shape isn't going to work as effectively as if it had the correct architecture. And there's a number of different problems that seem to be occurring as a result of this change in facial form. Things like blocked noses. If your face is narrower, you're more likely to have a blocked nose. Sleep apnea and snoring. Probably the biggest symptom is not crooked teeth. It's the effect on the airway. And how, as the face downswings, as it melts down and back, the tongue is being carried closer and closer to the airway, closer and closer to the hyoid bone. It seems that one of the most statistically significant measurements is the insertion of the tongue and the back of the pharyngeal wall. And as this reduces the chance of sleep apnea increases. So the more downswung you are, the more you're likely to have sleep apnea. And this is very well demonstrated in multiple studies. And of course, if you're snoring today, you're likely to have sleep apnea tomorrow. And the raising concern is the effect of sleep apnea on the IQ and social development of children, and of course, also on life expectancy. Now, why have you never heard of this before? Well, my father has spent a lifetime trying to raise awareness. I think his mistake has been he's tried to promote the treatment method he was using. I've spent over a decade trying to engage my profession on debate on why teeth are crooked. I thought this would be the, the crux point. And fortunately, despite an enormous effort, no one within my profession at all seems interested. And of course, there is always going to be a resistance to change. And there is a poor cost benefit from treating as we do.
A phrase I often use is that who makes money a dietitian or a liposurgeon? Fixing things makes money. Preventing things doesn't make money. And we are providing a competitive idea. It's not something you can add to orthodontics. We're saying that orthodontics and a lot of other specialities of the face are going in the wrong direction. And people really don't want to hear that. The medical profession is very happy to listen to ideas that further the consensus. It is not happy to listen to ideas that are in conflict with the consensus. Now, we have tried to engage with endlessly with people on research. Um, we have an outstanding challenge for anyone who wants to undertake case comparisons. But research doesn't occur without assistance from significant universities and research institutions. It's very easy to turn around and say, prove your case. It is only lucky that Einstein and these other great thinkers were not asked to prove their cases. It is very difficult to prove anything. And without the assistance from a research foundation or institution, research is, is not going to happen. It's the easiest way to shut people up is ask them to show me the evidence because it's a very difficult thing to do. Now, clearly the treatment we provide Bioblock orthotropics can significantly affect the development of the face. And I'm working towards the point where changes like this are my normal.